Tana. How are you? Hi, Dr. Naidu. How are you? It's so wonderful. wonderful to see you. It's always lovely to see you. I was just talking up a storm about how much we love you, Dr. Uma Naidu, and all your information you always share with us. So thank you for finding the time. How's your day oh, going? Yes. Always such a pleasure. I just love your message. I love what you're doing. Um, to be you. a nutritional psychiatrist, I mean, just so fits with what we do, and it's just so exciting to see what you're doing. Absolutely, and and well, thank you, thank you for that compliment, which I really take to the heart. But also, you know, Tan, as as in the in the times where we've talked, I've understood through your clinical lens and uh, your work at the uh, Doc Amon's clinic, and also your book. Um, you know, that you've noticed this connection yourself. And I would love to get some, some of your examples of that um, that could be helpful to our listeners and our followers here. Very much so. So I actually wrote in 2013, I ended up publishing a book, The Omni Diet. Um, so, and I when remember I wrote that. that, yeah, a lot of people thought that I wrote it because I was a nurse and it was what I do at the clinics. And it ultimately mm -hmm. became what I do at the clinics. Right, right. But I started out as a trauma nurse. And it's interesting that I chose trauma because um, my life was really interesting. I have a new book coming out in January called The, Reluctant, called the Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. Oh, and um, yeah. so it's about overcoming trauma, fear, anxiety, grief. Um, yeah. And so when I wrote The Omni Diet, I, I didn't actually start out on that journey Right. to help other people. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. a journey to help myself, as, as wow. many of us do. That's, um, true. Became, That's true. Yeah. yeah, it became this organic, natural progression. And when we started to see how it worked in our family, we started planting it in the clinics, and it was just astounding. Our best testimonials come from people who change their diet, who get their diet right. Wow. And wow. so, yeah, I, I spent, you know, besides my nursing education, I spent about 300 hours um, you know, educating myself through um, functional medicine and metabolic yes. medicine. Absolutely and really important these support. days. Exactly. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love that. I, I love um, hearing the backstory to any of these sort of beautiful books that come out and really things that are useful to others. And I know you have that mission as well. Um, what were the things that you noticed around specific foods? Because I had a really interesting conversation with you recently, and I've seen this in so many of my patients who have relatives. They will say that a certain food um, that their brother had or their sister or their mom or their dad had a complete, and it's, it's a healthy food. They had a completely different response to, you know, speaking to the home microbiome and sort of our unique responses and more personalized medicine, but looking at a functional approach. Um, can, you, can you share that with us as well? Absolutely. So we actually have functional medicine doctors and naturopaths work with us at Amon Clinics. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason for that is because it's just such a huge part of getting well is, you know, there's this gut brain connection, which you talk of so beautifully, you speak of so beautifully in your book. Okay. Um, and when I, when I actually interviewed you, and we've been talking about that for a while, and a lot of people are like, what, my gut, my brain, I don't understand. Right. Um, but we find that when people get their gut right, things are better. So Absolutely. a lot of people, yeah, so when, we, when people come in, we will often put them on an elimination diet initially. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we think everyone should have the same diet. They shouldn't, just like you just said, it's very personalized. We'll actually right. test your blood. We do all right. these tests on you. The reason we do the elimination diet is to start from ground zero. Right, so we do an elimination diet. We cut out the, the most common culprits, which okay. are dairy, gluten, sugar, soy, okay. corn. And as okay. soon as I give that list, <laughs> processed foods, everybody looks at me like deer in the headlights. They're like, that's everything in my house. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons I wrote this book. And then I followed it up with a cookbook, The Brain Warrior's Way Cookbook, <gasps> which okay. is probably my most Wonderful. practical book. Right, it was really because it actually book. gives people tips about how to implement things. And make it easy. Right. You don't want to budget. It's like this is this one was written for it's it's um, 125 recipes for the ADD single mom who doesn't have money and has four kids. Awesome. Who don't listen. I'm you sure know, this, so, I'm sure this overlaps with our book. So uh, yeah, I, I think I I, oh, I no, think I that's so your helpful. Recipes. Yeah, your recipes are amazing. Um, so yeah, that was exciting to see. That's awesome. The, um, you know, I think the gut brain connection is not something that all practitioners are embracing. I think that, that some, I, I think, and I should say that differently, in terms of mental health. I think that people yeah. know medically that there is this connection and more research is burgeoning in the area, but people are not necessarily connecting it to mental health. And I think that that was why um, you, Dr. Amen, myself had a really helpful and useful conversation because 
there are people who are not making those connections and we are seeing it in mental health. We are, you are seeing it in your clinic. You're seeing people heal. I've had patients present with panic. I've had patients present with really overwhelming levels of OCD that they were still functioning, but it was distracting them. It was uh, making, it, making life uncomfortable to yeah. live. And when, when we looked at it in a broader spectrum way, and looked at a more personalized approach. And, and sometimes it is. In, in, it, sometimes it's eliminating glutamate foods and MSG from their diet, yeah. but they didn't realize there was a connection that was driving those symptoms. So I think that that is just a fascinating part of the work. Um, now, you, you, you talked about a food last week that you tried and your daughter had a different, uh, was it last yeah. week or the week before? I'd love, I'd love to hear you tell us about that because so many people experience that and then they think, that it's not related to the gut microbiome or that they, exactly. they wonder why it's happening here. Well, and then I think, you know, the gut microbiome, I think now is getting this, you know, a huge amount of attention, whether or not right. medical or uh, mental health practitioners are embracing it. It's, it's happening maybe a little too slowly, but it's at least getting mm -hmm. attention. But right. one it thing is. that we've been talking about for a long time is food and mood. And mm -hmm. that's why we say that everything, everyone's not the same. Right. Everybody is, everyone's individual. Not only are we going to test your numbers to see where mm -hmm. you're deficient, mm -hmm. um, we're going to put you on an elimination diet and then slowly introduce foods back in to see okay. which ones work best for you. But in addition to that, we want to know your brain type. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain foods that increase serotonin, like carbohydrates increase the, the availability of serotonin. Yes. They give you this quick sort of feel good, don't worry, be happy feeling. Yes. Which is why, if you think about it, women on PMS... Women mm -hmm. PMS. Well, why have... do we reach for a glass of wine and a bar of chocolate? Right, exactly. It makes, exactly. It makes you feel good in the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? We're looking yeah. for that boost yeah. in serotonin, which drops during mm -hmm. PMS. But, but on the flip side of that, that people who have really bad ADD, mm -hmm. so they're having trouble focusing, that's the wrong thing for them to reach for. Yeah. Even smart carbohydrates, they want to like really watch the amount they're eating. When I say smart carbohydrates, I'm referring to things like sweet potatoes. The complex, you know, those the complex carbohydrates, yeah. Right. The ones so, that break down more slowly and don't create a yo-yo effect with our blood sugar. Right. And so we would say you want to focus more. Those people who with lacking focus want to focus more on a higher protein, still lots of fiber, lots of you know, <laughs> fruit rainbow. vegetables. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but less than the amount of, of starchy carbohydrates increase the amount of healthy fat and protein right. because it increases dopamine and focus. So a perfect example, I do best on a paleo version of keto. Okay, okay so like goat, goat cheese is fine, but other than that, no dairy okay. um, and no gluten, but very keto, high fat, but healthy fat, no trans yeah. fat, like right. avocados, nuts, seeds, that kind of right. olive oil. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the type of diet we talked about when we interviewed you. Yes. And so very, I mean, we are like literally perfectly in alignment. So I do best on that diet, but with very little fruit. Like I want very little things that have sugar. Even, be even berries, which are low glycemic. I only look at the berries. That's little bit, but that's things. about it. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. My daughter, when she tried to do that program, was neurotic. <laughs> because, <laughs> but when you, you look at our brain scans, my brain is sleepy. I have sleepy frontal lobes. Okay. She is almost verging on OCD. Wow. So she began to spin on thoughts that bothered her. Wow. When she doesn't wow. get any carbs, she's not. She's she still quite gets right. some pounds, right? Wow. Yeah. That's, that That's is individual. fascinating. And you saw it on a brain scan, which I thought was magnificent because it's, yeah. it's not just that, you know, someone reported a symptom or told you how they're yeah. feeling. You actually saw the changes on the brain scan, which I, I really think is, uh, is fair. And thank you for sharing that. You know, I think it's absolutely true because I, I, I read that post and I've written, written and read about this as well. I think that when people have, you know, um, they have a moment of do something fun that they're eating, but they're eating it all the time. And they think, well, why is my doctor telling me to stop? I feel good when I eat it. I hear this all the time. You know, I feel good when I have whatever that snack is. And what I explain to them is, is exactly what you just described. You will feel good because the serotonin, that's responding in your, it responding in your brain. But over time, it's yeah. going to harm your brain. And it's yeah. been shown on brain scans and it's going to add up. And your cognition could be impacted as well as your mood. So, you know, these are the things, these that we talk about, the pillars of things that you build in and the, and the things that you remove. For example, there was a study of um, trans fats 
that showed yes. that that people who ate more trans fats had more aggression. And in this day and age, with with everything going on, that is not something that we want for our brains or bodies. So you know, simple those simple changes, adding back things like the rainbow colors of fruit and vegetables. And I like the berries. You know, I I think the fruit are delicious. I like to suggest to people. that they use small amounts of fruit in a fun dessert that they want to make but by adding in fruit you're avoiding you know just plain white sugar and you using a fruit source to sweeten and that's your treat you know that's that's yeah. what you enjoy and so if you have a high glycemic fruit that's added in um say to a watermelon pop and we have yeah. some of these in you know in in the in the recipes that's fine you know have it that day but it's not every day and you're still not adding in a ton of you know just plain cane sugar which is not good for your brain yep. but you're adding in less um less sugar that way by having it in a healthier form or the other thing we talk about is eat the orange and skip the oranges again because of the added sugar that's yeah. hidden right and it's just one way to convey to people that's how you get your fiber your nutrients your vitamins your minerals and you get the whole you get the whole fruit rather than something that's juiced um now i had a question for you do you have a fun a favorite smoothie that you like i do so for the kids i will add more fruit to it okay mm-hmm. so the, we've got kids and they're doing school work and i've got two kids in our house who have very very busy brains and one who has a brain like mine that's a little more sleepy okay so the two kids who have sleep who have busier brains i'll put a little bit of banana in it like a third of a banana okay. and some um whole like some raw cacao that kind of stuff yeah yeah so that's good for your brain popular one mm-hmm. yeah and some almond butter and they love that but wow. for the two of us that have more sleepy brains mm-hmm. i put a lot of fat So I'll put either some MCT oil or coconut right. butter, mm-hmm. and then I'll put some extra fiber, acacia fiber. Okay. I will add, yeah, and I'll add protein powder to all of them, obviously, okay. plant-based protein mm-hmm. powder. Mm-hmm. And then I add about a cup of greens, but I only put about a half cup of berries. Yeah. So I'll do like, yeah. and, and I'm okay with berries. It's just yeah. I know I personally feel better when right. I limit the amount. The amount of and then for dessert, um, we make actually a chocolate bar because of this reason that you just talked about. <laughs> a sugar-free dairy-free chocolate bar that has 11 grams of fiber. Oh. And so I find that when I eat like that it's very satisfying but like right. a couple little tiny squares are enough. Exactly. And so I came up with a recipe for something called nutty butter squares. Oh. It's almond butter and the if it's dark chocolate, chocolate. with that raw cacao, yeah. it'll satisfy you. Absolutely. And and that's what all so many of my patients say that as they as they start to embrace, you know, I always say the darker the better and I give them those yep. rules, tell them the brain science behind it. But they actually learn that if they can sort of get off of that super sweet um palette of candy bars and start to switch to darker and darker they they do it gradually darker and darker like chocolate change. they taste much the change and they yeah. actually really enjoy it they love it and um they, they find that they you know they eat much less chocolate they're not going through two candy bars yeah. instead they're eating a couple of squares maybe a little you know piece of a mandarin orange or something like that and they you know because that pairs so beautifully and they completely satisfy they're not looking for the tub of ice cream or the unhealthy snacks that you know that they shouldn't be so i think um i i think it's all about uh, i'm sure and i'm sure certain you did this in your cookbook as well it's about providing some of those tweaks for people so they know yes. from you know from your office or from the aim and clinics that they can leave and they can they know what to do you know people yeah. always saying what's the one thing i can do and i i always go back to i was i sometimes i go to the spice because i do think that more people can add turmeric and pinch of black pepper into everything they do because i think it has so many benefits but at the same time there's some simple things like eat your fruit and vegetables yeah. you know small amount of berries um i i'm my favorite fruit but eat all of those vegetables because you're just going to get in the fiber that you need um the beans and seeds legumes and healthy whole grains but do it in a way because it's going to heal your microbiome because none of us have a perfect microbiome you know we all we all trying to keep that balance and avoid dysbiosis so a simple thing someone can do is you know just have more have salad with a healthy dressing you know vinaigrette with three three ingredients um you know oil red wine vinegar olive oil red wine vinegar salt and pepper just a simple thing instead of buying store bought dressing which you know is just full of additives and dyes and salt and sodium and sugar um and that way you're just making it a healthier change or adding vegetables to your dinner you know but whatever your favorite are You know, Daniel took my copy of your book. Your book's amazing. And what I loved about your book the most, both of us were looking through the recipes. Yes. This for brain on food is an amazing book. Um Thank completely you. in alignment with what we do. And what I loved is your recipes in there were 
unbelievably simple. Yes. So um, that's so when I first started, when I first wrote uh, my books, I was really one of those like everything has to be hundred percent perfect, pure, like these very like exotic ingredients. And, I, and I, but then I realized, oh, this is just not realistic. Right. And so for for a number of reasons, this is. Yes, it might work. It's not, but if it doesn't, if people can't access it or they just they either can't afford it or they right. just can't find it, it doesn't matter. Right. And so what I loved about your book was that the unbelievable simplicity of it. So what I find at the clinic Thank you. and what I love about what you do, um, we have, our patients are complicated. They're psychiatric yes. patients. They, you, they're not straightforward. Patients. Exactly. You're a, psych, you're a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. So they're complicated. They want to do well. But it's right. got to be simple. It's got to be simple. The flip exactly. side of that is, um, the flip side of that is they. There are some people who struggle because they just can't seem to break their addictions, and you got to work a little harder. Mm -hmm. There are other people who want to do it. They will do it. Right. They need to know what you can do. Exactly. And so, like, just tell me what to eat right now. Exactly. And so you do a great job of that. I love my term for it is replaced on a race. But you do a great job of like switch dairy for almond milk which you know exactly you tell people what those replacements are and by doing that it and really helps people just like make that quick switch. exactly and, and one of our doctors he was fantastic he did nothing but take that list with him to the grocery store and he ended up losing 40 pounds wow so because he's go. like i don't have time to do anything else I, he took exactly the I, it's too many it's him. it's too many it's too many things i totally agree many. and and we all, the other thing we did is we tried to like you said you on a, uh, you've shared with me before this very specific diet that works for you what we tried to do is make it you know, as a, and you know this, Tana, as a psychiatrist, whether someone walks in and has a paleo diet or a keto diet or is gluten free or is a carnivore in terms of what they eat, I, I've got to still embrace whatever it is to find the healthy plan to help them heal through using nutrition and mental health. And so, you know, what I often say is in the recipes, we, you know, yes, we have things that are not plant based, we have things that are plant based. But here's the thing, you know, if you see a salmon, a baked salmon recipe, you can do that with a cauliflower steak. You know, you can do that with cauliflower florets. So there's always a way that you can change it up to suit your diet, you know, and it's, it's really about the fact that when you start to embrace healthy ingredients across the board, all the things you can tolerate, you know, if, obviously if you're allergic to something, you know, that, then you can't do it. But that way you just, you're just making those healthier changes. And I find with, with the clients that I see, the moment that they start to feel better doing one thing, it can, it can sometimes be something yes. as simple as, you know, I'm going to cut back from three um, sodas a day, whether they diet or not, to one. And drink more water it, it, sometimes it's you know it, it's not necessarily a food itself but it's cutting back on something and they will come back and say you know i i think i want to do more because i'm starting to feel lighter or i have more energy or i'm you know i'm not feeling like a sugar crash in the middle of the day and i'm not then going to the vending machine for a, a, a bag of pretzels you know I'm, I'm finding that i can i can have a more even evened out way um, do you have, uh, do you, Tana, do you have a favorite uh, go-to meal that you, that you, you know, will make you feel happy, will make you feel less anxious, make you feel less stressed, or just something that you enjoy? Oh, geez, I have so many. So we really like food in this house. <laughs> yes, we, um, we know, do, too. One of the favorites, yeah, so one of the favorites for all of us that's just so simple is salmon. Yes, I mean, just a yes. simple big salmon. Um, you know, we always just throw some, a lot of greens with it. So maybe mm -hmm. asparagus or broccoli and yeah. a big salad. Um, but for us, because we are so busy, we really try to keep it simple like that. Absolutely. And that's why even my own recipes, I came up with some great recipes and I don't really, those aren't the, the, the exotic ones aren't the ones I use. But right. I love things like, um, like a turkey bolognese, but then yeah. it's like we're replacing all the ingredients and I use yeah. a spaghetti squash for the pasta nice. or zucchini yeah. um, for the pasta. Um, That's those great. Types of things, yeah, those make me feel good. I keep the tomato sauce on the light side right. for myself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of the sugar. Right, um, right, right. And so, yeah, and so those are some of my favorites. Those are lovely. I I, yes. Fish and things like that are some of our favorites. And then when we do tacos, we just use lettuce wraps. Exactly. So. That's, that's one of my, um, I love using uh, lettuce cups too, instead of a wrap. It makes it, makes it still equally delicious. You still get all the flavors in, plus you're adding back a green. So that's, that's one that's of right, my favorites. <laughs> my other you favorite what, is, yeah. So. What I love so much though is, I, I'm just amazed and I'm actually sort of fascinated that you're a psychiatrist who decided to become 
uh, like a chef and become like, uh, like that to me is like the perfect combination. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I think that's I, the wave of the future. Well, I, I hope so. You know, it, it, as, as, as I've told you before, um, or we've talked about, it really was a passion project for me. It was, well, Julie Child is my food hero and she did this later in life. So after residency, you know, packed up my bags and like, you know, I think I can do this. If I can just figure out my schedule, uh, how, how, how will it work for me? But again, there's this interesting thing that I, I wish I could say I had a grand plan about it. it. I was following things that I loved to do, but I also really cared what my patients were eating because I right. knew that they were suffering with side effects. And like you said, Tana, you know, these are not individuals who um, have a little bit of worry. They, they're stressed. They, they're having problems with major medications that if they weren't taking, they, they would be seriously ill. So you, I, I, early on in my career, I worked in forensic psychiatry and I dealt with very severe mental illness. And that's where I saw some of the most devastating side effects. And so it really brought back that conversation from residency about what can we do differently. You know that hospital food is terrible. I mean, across, I, I, I have yet to find a hospital where the food is good for any, in any department, any unit. Um, so I think that, you know, it had to be something that I was doing in the outpatient setting and, and trying to share recipes. And that's when it started to occur to me, well, why can't I say, well, you could do this with your smoothie. And I think what culinary school did for me is fulfill that passion around food, because of course we love to eat as well. But then it helped me find the language to simplify things. And I know what you say, I, I love oh to make much more complicated recipes. But the truth is what someone needs is I need to know how to make an egg scramble in a mug and take it to work. You know, I, love, not, so the extra, yeah. I think that was one of the ones I was remembering. <laughs> the egg scramble in a mug was one. You had one with some, um, I think it was either raw or goat milk yogurt that just looked amazing to me. There was something, a uh, very quick one. Exactly. Um, just very, quick and easy, you know, that you can yeah. grab and go and, and stuff that that either you can prep ahead or that you, you know. And by the way, the, what I love to do with the egg scramble is I, I make them throw in tons of spinach and chopped veggies, like the leftover roasted veggies from the night before can go on the egg love scramble. It. You know, so it's, it's just adding back. But, but you know, those are, those are just the little, the, little, uh, the little tips and tricks. Do you have a favorite tea that you like to drink? I do. I'm drinking it now. It's green tea. Green tea. <laughs> <laughs> I do, so I yeah. like it very strong. So I dilute it with a whole bunch of water. Yes, but, yes. Um, but it's got but that I, great, yeah, fragrance and yeah. and yeah, and it's it's hydrating, but it's also it kind of keep. I find it keeps me sharp. You know the um, the uh, polyphenols like, yeah. keep me sharp. My so, so it's a great pick me up is my little green tea. Exactly. Um, People say that a lot, and it's it's a good. It's actually a good plan. So much better than I like coffee, and coffee is good on many levels. But I have it in the morning. Um, and then switch to tea. Me too. I have like a quarter cap in the morning because if I have too much caffeine, I'm I have, I'm hyperthyroid. I will okay. tend to not. So, so that would be can yeah. That can, that can be yeah. That that. So um, I want to say one thing is I want to first of all just I so appreciate you having me on and interviewing me. But oh the my truth goodness. is I just want to take a minute because you're I feel like a rising tide floats all boats and I just was so like impressed by your book. By the Thank simplicity you. of it, you have that gift that my husband has, which is taking really complex information <laughs> and making it simple. Try to make it and easy. so yes. your book, This Is Your Brain on Food, I was really impressed. Um, you know, for being a psychiatrist, you know, this Harvard trained psychiatrist, <laughs> I, I was really impressed that you took this information, you really simplified it, you put really easy recipes, because just to reiterate that this, our best testimonials come from people who change their food. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's such an important concept and topic. Absolutely. And this book is really important. Thank so, you. Uh, yeah, and I love one thing. Another thing you said when we interviewed you, and I've said this for a long time, is people will, like, jump all over you. If you make a comment, you make a statement about health mm -hmm. based on the, the research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People will then jump all over you when, when that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, is it wrong or did they just update the research, right? Exactly. So it changes said, all the be, time. Yeah, yeah don't exactly. be attached to your message. Be right. attached to the education and the learning and the research. Absolutely. You, I, and so I love absolutely. that you follow that. And I love your book is like literally in alignment with everything we do. You just have newer research. And I just, I love that. 
So well, it'd be updated all the time. And it's a similar thing. You know, I, I love the books that you and Dr. Eamon have written as well. And I do feel aligned. And I, I thank you for saying that because, you know, things change minute by minute. Um, things change all the time. And when we use Instagram a lot um, in terms of updating people about the new research and then providing the link. So if someone really is, you know, nutrition nerds like we are, they can go read it. But then they know the summarized tips that they can take home because research is changing all the time. And I think that, you know, we, we come to it with humility. We, we're not saying to you, you know, you have to eat 10 carrots and 10 carrots is going to cure your mood by right. two points. That's why the plan is, is, has a lot of general principles, has food lists of things to embrace, has food lists of things to avoid, and then recipes to match that. Because we know that things change all the time. And it's not that anything that book will be, you know, will, be, will make you toxic or make you sick. And that's always what I feel very strongly about regarding the nutrition. Unless you're allergic or have an absolute medical intolerance to something or say something like celiac disease, you're not going to get sick eating food. You know, there may be something else going on and then you need to speak to your doctors about it. But that, you know, eating a little bit more turmeric is not going to harm you. Eating, you know, for more vegetables is not going to hurt you. So I think it's that general principle with which we try to lead and understanding that, you know, tomorrow says, someone says, oh, this was wrong. We, we, have an under we can look at the research. We can provide information for you and take it from there um, but it's a you know it's a general it's a general way to feel better and and with that there's very specifics with each condition like you know the nitrates and depression people don't always know that and so someone who thinks that they're taking the meal prepping and taking a great healthy whole wheat wrap to work every day but they're putting in a deli meat that has nitrates is actually driving their depression so it's those little right. things that people just need to know that are helpful but but i just loved having you and i'm so glad that you found the time because i know that you are a very busy lady and um and and so we thank you and and always grateful to talk to you and just you know love your message as well no, so so thank honor. you and i would love yeah. to you know what i would love to do i would yeah. love at some point um, I know we can't do it live. Maybe we could do it together on um, Zoom. Yeah. A cook along would be fun. You know, we'll that's that a great idea. This yeah. Is, we can do one recipe no, from your book of a phone. I'm not a chef, that, so, you, you just, so, so I'm not going to do that. Let's do that. We can but do it, it from your kitchen to mine. I'd love that. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, that'd be really fun. I'm going to take you up on that, Tony. You're going to find <laughs> okay. me emailing you tomorrow morning. So when do you want to do that cook along? I'd love that. We I actually, you know, we having uh, we we launched today a brain um, a brain food challenge uh, to 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 our followers, which is you know uh, getting the book, trying out a recipe, tagging your friends, and so just just to see if people are liking it and if they're enjoying the recipes, because again, it's. You know, we're not teaching souffle. Uh, we, right. we just we just want you to have a healthy breakfast and have a have a, you know a good day of good meals. So. Right, and I think it's one of the points is that you don't have to be a chef. So. Exactly, exactly. You yeah. don't. You know, that's the that's the whole point. But it was so lovely to see you. My best to Dr. Amen and all of your family, and thank you for spending the time with us. We just love having you on. Such and, an honor, uh, Dr. Take good care, Tana. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.